This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 36 Inu Boku SS The Weekly Wish List I guess I'm making up for last week's overload with a tiny list this week. Well, to be honest, it's a small release week too. First is Knights of Sidonia Volume 6 from Vertical. I reviewed Volume 1 in the second episode of this podcast and haven't lost interest since. Volume 5 left on a cliffhanger, so Volume 6 is a must. Over at Viz is the second volume of VoiceOver, Seiyu Academy. I like the first volume well enough that I want to read the second volume. Also from Viz is Magi Volume 3. I haven't read the first volume yet, but it seems to have potential, so I will put it on the list tentatively. The VizManga.com Update The top 10 list at VizManga.com this week was a bit like a slide puzzle, with the top 4 just switching places around. For the week of November 26, 2013, Yu Yu Hakusho returns to the top spot with Volume 6 coming in at number 1. Nisei Koi Volume 6 moves back up 1 to number 2, while Skip Beat moves up 1 with Volume 14 at number 3. Naruto Volume 63 falls 3 to number 4, and Gimmick Volume 3 breaks the top 5 at number 5. Hanakimi prepares to wrap up with Volume 22 coming in at number 6, while a Yu-Gi-Oh! Final Double Hitter strikes with R Volume 5 coming in at number 7, and Millennium World Volume 7 coming in at number 8. Love Calm falls 1, with Volume 14 coming in at number 9, and Double Juliet Volume 6 debuts at number 10. Well, not much change here. There was some rearranging of the top five, but no big surprises. There are still two Yu-Gi-Oh! titles, but there are also the final volumes for their respective series. I wonder what will happen once there are no more new titles coming out. The only real new addition to the list is the backlist title, Double Juliet. I still think it's interesting that backlist titles continue to dominate digital, including taking the top spot. New York Times Bestseller List Over at the New York Times bestseller list, the Titans prove that magical girls or cute girls with green hair can't keep them at bay. For the week of December 7th, 2013, there's yet another number one title. One Piece Volume 69 takes its place as king of the list at number one. Right behind it is Attack on Titan Volume 9 holding steady at number two. The Titan Horde continues with Attack on Titan Volume 3 moving up seven to number three, while Volume 1 only moves up two to reach number four. Pokemon Black and White Volume 10 returns to the top of the top five at number five. Attack on Titan Volume 2 also returns to come in at number six, while last week's number one, Sailor Moon Short Stories Volume 2, falls six to come in at number seven. Demon Love Spell Volume 5 returns to number eight, as does Maximum Ride Volume 7, which comes in at number nine, and Naruto Volume 63 makes one last drop to come in at number 10. Most of Yen Press's newcomers last week didn't last. With Christmas fast approaching, it shouldn't be any surprise that Attack on Titan got a surge. The return of titles like Pokemon Black and White, Demon Love Spell, and Maximum Ride aren't surprising either, as they will no doubt find homes under some Christmas trees. Review Inuboku SS Inuboku Secret Service Volume 1 I have developed an all-encompassing love of all things yokai, so when Yen Press announced Inuboku SS, I was of course interested in reading it. It is about Ririchiro Shirakian, a girl from a family of old money who also has Ayakashi blood as a genetic throwback to a human ancestor who coupled with an Ayakashi. She moves to Maison de Ayakashi because she wants to become independent, but everyone who moves into the apartment building is assigned a member of its secret service. Soshi Mike Tsukami is assigned to Ririchiro, and he is about as devoted and protective as a dog, much to Ririchiro's chagrin. It is by Koka Fujiwara and is published by Yen Press. It is rated for older teen and is a supernatural romance. It retails for eleven ninety nine. I had my doubts about this volume as I started to read it. I wasn't sure what to make of Ririchiro at first. She speaks without thinking and comes off as mean and blunt. She immediately regrets her words, but doesn't know how to apologize properly. She is very awkward socially, and is sincere in wanting to change. I didn't like her at first, but as I continued reading, I found her growing on me. 
I found myself sympathizing with her as bits of her past is revealed. I also found her naivete endearing, since she wasn't so much clueless as inexperienced in dealing with someone having feelings for her. That someone is Soshi. He is very over-the-top at first with his devotion to Ririchiro. He asks her to dispose of him when she tells him she doesn't need him at first. He waits outside her apartment for hours until she comes out. He even overreacts when she just leaves him alone for a few minutes while they are shopping. The devotion does get annoying at times, which makes his few moments of true feelings not as genuine. I could see where Ririchiro started to grow because of her contact with Soshi, but I really didn't see any good changes in him. The rest of the cast is an eccentric bunch. Ririchiro's childhood friend, Sori Nozuka, also lives in the building. He knows Ririchiro well and isn't fazed by her personality. He has Itan Momin blood in him, and he spends as much time as a bolt of cloth as he does as human. His secret service is Nobara Yukino Koji. She has very Yuri inclinations and is immediately taken by Ririchiro. I really didn't care for her. So she has his rivals in Banri Watanuki and his secret service, Zange Natsume. They are like Soshi's childhood friends. Watanuki is more for comedy relief, while Natsume has a more mysterious air as he seems to have some kind of second sight. There are still more tenants to meet, and they will no doubt appear in future chapters. The staff was fun, especially the congier, who looked more like a Yakuza type, cross-shaped scar on his face and all, but is really a shy Nekomata. I hope we see more of him later. Ririchiro and Soshi have a past connection that is hinted at throughout the volume, and it ends with the impression that Soshi doesn't want Ririchiro to know about it. My curiosity about this overrides my dislike for some of the more fan y things in the book. Ririchiro's skirts are just short of being too short, and Yukino Koji's tendencies, as well as chest, feels to me they were more for the male audience. While these moments do tend to be minor, they can be irksome at times. Overall, I did like Inuboku SS Volume 1, but I didn't love it. But I do think it has enough potential for me to give it another volume. The variety of yokai is nice, with both more common types like Yukidono and Kappas, as well as Orochi, Zashiki, Warashi, and Hyakume. The art is nothing to complain about, and most everyone is a bishi. Even the yokai forms are good looking. This title isn't going to be for everyone, but if you like yokai and supernatural romance, then pick up the first volume. I give Inuboku SS Volume 1 a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at MangaZanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.